and this is Mike Drop Sports, and we are here for a Monday show. Welcome back again, everybody. What's up, Miss Pittsburgh? What's up, Sean? What's up, Big Stretch? We're getting rolling here as we'll build up here in the chat. As always, make sure you hit that like button. If you're not watching now, you can watch it later. Uh, here on Steel City Live, as always, guys, we're here uh, every day, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and... Uh, as always, we're rocking along here. Let me adjust my camera slightly. All right, now we're good. <clears throat> also, guys, uh, what's up, uh, Goofy Boy, Ron? What's up? Hey, uh, yeah, well, guys, we're just going to kick things off here a little bit, talking a little bit about um, some players maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers shouldn't draft. Uh, one former Pittsburgh Steeler that was on this show uh, mentioned a guy like a Drake May. A guy like him, and if you're Omar Khan, a guy like him could get your butt fired if you draft him, is according to uh, Merrill Hodge, and uh, that's what he had to say about a guy like Drake May. So we want to make sure that the Pittsburgh Steelers watch out for guys like that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> What's up, Robert? Uh, goofy boy, told you I'm going to be on the next slide. Oh, all right, man. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're talking about that kind of stuff. Also, anything that you want to bring up, bring up in the chat as we move through. Also, I want to talk about a top 35 prospect in the NFL draft this season here in 2024, taking a visit with the Pittsburgh Steelers as one of his pre-draft visits. Um, and also that showing the Pittsburgh Steelers interest in possibly getting the services of another uh, bigger name guy at wide receiver. So uh, that's something that we should look forward to also adding a weapon to an Arthur Smith offense being led by Russell Wilson heading into this offseason. Um, adding the more weapons that you are adding as many weapons as possible is only going to mean good things. So uh, that's something exciting to look for. What's up, George? But uh, yeah, somebody like him. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But I do want to dive into that, uh, what Merrill said about a guy like a Drake May. That would get you fired. He kind of reminds me, um, with his throw in motion, if you look at like the picture I'd put in the thumbnail, who does that throw in motion remind you of? It reminds me of somebody, somebody like almost like a Tim Tebow type look, you know, <laughs> this looks weird. It looks like a weird throw in motion. I don't know. Uh, I have not watched much of him because I don't think much of him as a guy coming into the next level as a potential star for a team, uh, not just the Pittsburgh Steelers, anybody. And I'm going to have to agree with Merrill on this. Uh, I think a guy like a, a Drake may maybe even, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what other guys that I would maybe even classify in there, but Drake May, somebody similar to him and his skill set, I'm just not down for, and I think he could get a guy fired, man. Uh, you make the wrong move, especially in the top 10. You're setting your franchise back several seasons, man, several years. It's just hard to recover from that unless you're smart and can dig your way out quickly. It's probably going to cost you your job, you know? Uh, sorry, guys, I was just looking at the chat. Uh, you guys are talking back and forth. What's up, JD? Uh, again, guys, as always, make sure you're smacking the shit out of that like button. Beat the crap out of it. And uh, also make sure you share this to everybody that you know. That would be cool as we continue to grow our community here. And we're talking about players maybe that would get you fired in the NFL draft. And if you know of any of those players or you're thinking of any of those types of players, maybe throw that in the chat uh, as we move forward. Don't forget our giveaway coming up this Friday. So one of our lucky Mafia members will uh, make sure that they are uh, given one of those cool, uh, uh, cool pieces of Steeler memorabilia. So that's neat too. What's up, Sugar Ray? All right. Just reading the chat. Sorry guys. When I pause, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> I always like try to glance up and then I try to bring it up down here. But if I'm looking at other Steelers news or other news from around the league, that's what I'm kind of uh, seeing. But uh, also, guys, we're talking about people that the Steelers are bringing in for pre-draft visits, kind of giving you a little bit of insight into what maybe uh, is going on inside of the Steelers' head as they prepare for this draft period here in 2024 that's one of the most imperative that they've had in a long time. Um I think so. I think that this draft here is going to be a defining moment for a guy like Omar Khan, and I think it could be a defining moment for a long veteran tenured head coach and Mike Tomlin. I think that this draft here 
is going to help you here in 2024, as the 2023 guys did and helped you uh, quickly. So I think the Pittsburgh Steelers really have to be focused on this draft and really have to come through with something special here. Uh, I just think that the Pittsburgh Steelers using this draft to springboard into the 2024 season, gaining some guys that are NFL-ready guys that could come in and help and help early is going to be imperative, and they have to really hit it here, man. And uh, I, I think they can do it. I, I really do. Uh, you're looking at some of the Steelers ho or the Steelers hosting some of these draft prospects for pre-draft visits on Monday, according to the Pittsburgh Tribune review, uh, reviews. Uh, Chris Adam Adamski, uh, Rutgers cornerback Max Melton, and Iowa defensive lineman Logan Lee are at the team's facility today, or were at the team's facility today. I'm not sure if they would still be there at 6:30 in the evening. So. Um, Melton's visit uh, was known of yesterday, but uh, not the other one. So, not Max Melton, uh, a guy that's a cornerback. You know the Pittsburgh Steelers are still hungry to add to that room. Uh, but they also are looking at defensive tackles and guys to beef up that defensive front. And I think that that's going to prove to be special also. When you have a young guy in Keanu Benton who's starting to come along, you want to continue to get younger there because the Steelers are starting to get old a little bit in the defense here and there. And uh, I think it is imperative for the Pittsburgh Steelers to continue to make quality draft picks here in 2024 to continue to have that trend of getting young. You know, you don't want to get old, man. You don't want that to catch you off guard. We've seen it happen to the Steelers several other times uh, throughout the recent uh, history of the team here in the last decade or so. We've seen them age out at times. We've seen them have one side of the football looking way better than the other. And this is why I say it's so important this year. It's so important to make sure that you're having that quality draft. No doubt about it. Uh, Ron, did you hear that Tyler uh, Hundley... Almost went to the Steelers, but after, uh, but that, that all got uh, canceled when the Steelers got Fields. Uh, no, I didn't see that. Um, does it fit the scheme? Is what I want. You met Tyler Huntley from uh, the Baltimore Ravens, right? Rom. Yeah, I don't know if he. I don't know if that's what the Steelers are really aiming to do right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if they really want a guy that's going to run all over the park or, you know, I don't, I just don't know. I don't know enough about Tyler Huntley and his play style. I've never been a huge fan of him. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Does it fit? You know, that's the question for me or would it have fit, but that's good that it got squashed. Cause I kind of like what they did. You know, they stayed cheap, um, which I think they needed to do. If you were going to revamp that room. I think you needed to stay cheap. That way you could put quality pieces around whoever you brought in. And I think that that was the plan of attack. Omar Khan looking at, and Mike Tomlin also looking at this and Andy Weidel. And they're looking at that room and saying, hey, you know, we weren't successful for the majority of the season. For probably 95% of the season, we weren't successful at that position. And if we're going to totally dump and revamp that room and switch it all up, we need to make sure that we stay under a certain amount of money. And that way we can em employ quality veterans, quality young people to put in place weapons, defensive guys around, around whoever's quarterback in order to be successful and win with that formula. And I think that that's exactly what they did. We've seen it work in the past at other places, so we'll see. Uh, big stretch. What's up, Jason? Caleb Williams will get in, get them fired. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Caleb Williams. I, yeah, I'm not. Okay, Rowan. Uh, thank you, buddy, for telling me. Um, no, I just, I, I'm not a huge fan. He doesn't excite me, man. He doesn't, like, I wouldn't be sitting there at number one with the number one draft selection, and I wouldn't be going, yeah, it's Caleb Williams, yes. I, I, I just don't get that vibe from him, man. At least I don't. Maybe some of you do, but I don't. Um, maybe some of you think the way I do on this. I'm just not thrilled you know and I haven't had one of those guys that I've been super thrilled about you know the only one that really took me off guard was CJ Stroud and I fell into the hype of people saying maybe that he wasn't going to be that good but man he ended up being pretty decent uh he I would have been more excited for a guy like him knowing now what I know so hey it is what it is uh Sean says I hope the Steelers pick up a stud tackle in the first round um, in the first round, a beast wide receiver in the second and Van Pran in the third, unless JPJ or Frazier is still available. Yeah, you never know, man. 
That's just the thing with this. It's such a crapshoot, guys. That's what this draft is. And you have so many people that put out their mocks and all that. And we all do it, too. And it, uh, it's just such a crapshoot. And you really just don't know how it's going to go, man. Because, honestly, one thing that we're not all privy to, and it's something that I talked about this morning, is those interview processes. Those are really important, man. You're learning a lot about players there that you know, may just totally wipe a guy off your draft board, you know? Um, and then also, sometimes we're not privy to some of the medical stuff that's going on, you know? One team doctor may say something different as opposed to another team's doctor. So those things change, and those variables change. And then you're looking at, hey, how did this guy interview? Did he strike you as our type of player, you know? And one team may think that that is their type of player. But, you know, then the Steelers look at somebody and may say, you know what, that ain't our guy, man. That ain't our type of dude, you know. We don't want to bring him in. Maybe uh, he's not a good fit for us. And also, then you're looking at another variable, scheme. How do these players fit into the scheme that we run? How exotic do we get things moving here? You know, does this player have the intellect to be able to do the things that we want to do on Sundays? Does this player have the athletic ability to do what we want them to do on Sundays? There are so many factors at play. It is very hard to pinpoint exactly where these teams are going to go. Um, and it's short of positional needs, like Sean just mentioned, you need a tackle, you need a center, you need a wide receiver. You need those things. Those are positional needs. Uh, but short of that, it, it's just a real crapshoot. It really, really is. Uh, Sam Mason, thoughts on Pickens actually being that guy? I think Pickens is actually that guy. I think George Pickens is athletically gifted enough to be a top three wide receiver in the NFL. I truly, truly believe that. What's going to get in George Pickens' way, and if he, and if it's only if he allows it, is his ego and his own self. He's the only one that could derail this right now. I think athletically, his catch radius is huge. Uh, he has, yes, he doesn't get huge separation, but he has that ability to attack the football, manipulate his body in ways that others cannot and catch it. And he's very, very sure-handed. Uh, a guy, too, that the moment's not too big for him. You saw down there in that Baltimore game when he caught that big catch from Kenny Pickett. Boom. Right there, man. No no uh, hesitation. Just hit it, man. Knew what he had to do and got it done. You saw that big game he had with Mason Rudolph. You saw that one catch in Cleveland that took immense concentration from George Pickens. And that was thrown by Mitchell Trubisky. So he's had success with multitude of different quarterbacks. Three different quarterbacks. Um, and that's good. You know that it's not just one quarterback getting a ball to him and he's comfortable there. He has that ability to adjust, which I really, really like. And it doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball. He's still going to have that production. And then you're going to see George here in 2024 come under some immense pressure. When you are the franchise wide receiver, you are that guy, that number one target. You are going to see a lot of double teams. And I think he saw, he saw it some last year. So that should have prepared him a little bit for what's ahead. But I think George can handle that type of pressure also. And he's a guy that wants the football. Those are guys you want on the team. George is the only one that can derail this train, man, for himself. And I truly believe if he doesn't self-sabotage, I think that he could really be a special player in 2024 and beyond. And I think the Pittsburgh Steelers would be wise to keep him and, you know, continue to build off of him, especially if he does what I think he can do and many others. Uh, Ron Sampson, Sean, you think JPJ is still in the draft by the third round? Jason, are you able to give your opinion to I don't think he's there. Uh, by the third round. I don't. I think he's gone before the end of the first. I think he may fall out of the top 25, like some are saying. But I don't think, I wouldn't, I, if you see him in the second, I'd be really, really, really surprised. Um, I don't even know if Zach Frazier is going to be there in a second. So Sean may be right with his Van Pran, you know, uh, assessment of that, you know. Um, that could be a possibility because he may be the only one left. 
And if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and you have a feeling like those two guys are going to be gone and you are 1,000% sure that you want one of those guys, that you have to come out of this draft with one of those guys, you're going to need to figure out a way to trade up in the second round or back up into the first round. Or, hey, if JPJ's starting to slide, stand pat at 20 and pick his ass up. You know, those are the types of things. But I just definitely don't think JPJ is survives the first round. Uh, I I think that the talent level is there. Um, and Zach Frazier, in my eyes, is a borderline first-round talent. And uh, honestly, I think he could definitely really, really be good in the Pittsburgh Steelers and Arthur Smith system. I really, really think so. Uh, that's my guy that I would like just because I like the style play. Um, but I wouldn't be mad about a JPJ at all. Uh, but I just don't know where those guys fit inside of this draft board and when those centers are going to start coming off. Are teams that are center needy ahead of the Pittsburgh Steelers willing to take a flyer on one of them and pick them early before the 20th overall pick? You know, there are several needy teams that need a center in front of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, um, that could uh, spell disaster. They may just get off the board. You never know. Uh, you just never know with it. George Teston, uh, I don't like Williams either. Just not a fan, George. I'm just not. He, does, he doesn't make me scream hooray. Uh, epic. Uh, uh, this is from Sean. I don't think JPJ will be there in the third round. I think Van Pram will be. Good possibility for a third rounder. Yeah, he may be. And that's just what I was saying there too, Sean. Uh, I... You know, those runs on players, man. When teams get freaked out that that position group is going to get ate up. And you, we've seen it happen so many times in the draft. The minute they see that position group start to fly off the board, teams scramble and they try to figure out how to make sure they get their guy. And sometimes guys are drafted ahead of where they probably should be. aware Ahead of where their value truly is. And that's a big thing in my eyes. Uh, JD, what's up, man? Wonder how Russ and his wide receivers practice went. Did you hear anything? I did not. I didn't really pay attention to it after that. Uh, I didn't see any major headlines. I kind of like scan that news every day and I didn't really see anything like really popping out there about it. Um, I did hear one thing that Pat Fryermuth was starting to gain a, a little bit of chemistry with Russell Wilson. And, uh, that's about all I heard. Uh, but we'll see, maybe more will come out here later in the week about how that went. And, uh, as they continue to maybe do it here this off season, but, uh, guys, like I talked about this morning, this Pittsburgh Steelers team and being led by Russell Wilson currently, as Mike Tomlin put it, pole position type guy. If you're being led by Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson really needs to take this bull by the horns for lack of a better term and really get this team together. And you got to start building that now. And if you don't, that championship caliber football team just doesn't pop out of nowhere. You really got to start coming together early, man. And that's got to be before OTAs. That's got to be before the mini camps and uh, training camps. It's got to it's got to start happening now. And I'm hoping that that is what's happening now. And I hope that Russell Wilson has been around this, you know, this NFL circuit long enough. And he's been around enough teams to know exactly what championship teams are made out of and you don't necessarily have the most talent have to have the most talented roster um but having one that is together really makes a difference uh robert says caleb wasn't great against the better teams no yeah yeah dude I just can't get excited for him for some reason. And then you bring up there, Robert, he's not being good against the better teams in college football. And that should say something, you know, like when this guy's facing more complex schemes, better athletes, better teams, he's not able to perform the way that he was before. And that, that means something. It definitely means something. Uh, Robert Rode also says the crazy thing about J.J. McCarthy was he was an absolute uh, or an outstanding hockey player before going to prep academy and only played football. Oh, man, that's crazy. I didn't know he played hockey. He seems like that lanky type dude, that like bigger type dude. Yeah, yeah, seems to fit. That's crazy how he switched like that from hockey to football. Hockey's the most physical sport right now, I can tell you that, at least in my eyes. Uh, it's definitely super physical. Hockey playoffs are the best, too. Like, honestly. Uh, my son wants to make popcorn, so he's down here waving popcorn. Yeah, you can. Goodbye.
my son wants to make popcorn, so he had to come down and ask me to use the microwave. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's nuts. All right, guys, let me get a drink here. All right. Nathaniel Sampson, what's up, my friend? My day's going very good. I've been busy all day, so uh, getting to the live show was a little bit of a challenge, but I got here, and I'm ready to roll. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting the like button for us here at Steel City Live. Uh, as we want, get viewers get in and out. Make sure you're cracking that like button before you roll on with your day. Uh, make sure you do that for us as we continue to talk football, continue to talk Pittsburgh Steelers here on uh, Mike Drop Sports. And I uh, appreciate you guys also so very much as we continue to grow the channel. It's really awesome. And don't forget the giveaway here on the 12th. Uh, that's going to be an exciting day. Somebody going to get some memorabilia. Uh, Sean says, I'm looking forward to watching Patrick Queen shut down Derrick Henry. It'll be glorious. Yeah. Patrick, or, um, Derrick Henry, don't scare me either, man. I know some, they all call him King Henry, but I'm on board with Sean. I think we're going to have some guys that stuff his ass like they normally do. Uh, I really, really do. Uh, just Derrick Henry doesn't scare me like that. I, I, You know, when he's played the Steelers, can you name a time when he really just took over the whole ball game and really dominated the Steelers? I just can't, can't recall any off the top of my head. What's up, Dylan Baker? Or Becker, sorry. I would say Baker whenever you pop up here. I don't know why. What's up, Dylan? Teflon John. Uh, Antioch, California, tapping in. Uh, the Antioch, the home of uh, one Najee Harris. Uh, he played some high school ball there in Antioch, California. Uh, did you ever get to watch Najee Teflon John in uh, in uh, high school? That's pretty cool if you did. Uh, Plush Time TV, what's up, fellow Steeler fans? What's up, Plush Time? Welcome to the channel. Appreciate you, man. Uh, and then my son puts in the chat, Jackson Jacobs, can uh, I make popcorn? Like, literally, dude. <laughs> It's the micro blaster. What's the worst you could do? Uh, burn a bag of popcorn in the micro blaster. <laughs> he would, dude. He likes it. He thinks he's big shit cooking popcorn up there. So uh, we'll see how it goes. If uh, the smoke alarms go off, I'll know what happened. <laughs> You'll all know what happened, too. All right, guys. As we move through the show here, we're talking Pittsburgh Steelers. We're talking NFL football. Put your comments, questions, concerns in the chats. As we continue to move through the show, uh, they're always welcomed. We answer everybody as much as humanly possible. Got to have butter for the show. Got to have popcorn for the show. Yeah, extra butter, Ron says. Yeah, I like the Blasto butter, guys. If you're talking popcorn and you're in the popcorn aisle at the grocery store, you have to if you are medically allowed because some people can't have that much butter because this shit is soaked in butter. It's called Blasto butter by Jolly Time. It is the best, dude. It is soaked in butter. It is super good, and when it's super hot, when it first comes out of the bag, you ain't finding a better popcorn nowhere short of the movie theater. I can tell you that, and it might even be better in movie theater popcorn, to be honest. I've seen all the local greats. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to get you got to go watch the guys like that. That's really neat. Uh, what's some of the others from Antioch? I know there's several. Uh, I thought Marshawn Lynch was from there, maybe. Uh I know there's several. I do know there's several that have uh, come through Antioch, and that's a pretty cool uh, pedigree for Antioch to have that many athletes come through there and shine. Uh, what do you think about your boy Najee, Teflon John? Uh, does he get that extension from the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, does he get that fifth-year option? How does this all work, and how does that all play out for Najee Harris? You know, That is one of the questions heading toward this draft, and May 2 is rapidly approaching. And depending on what the Pittsburgh Steelers are able to get done in this draft, there's going to be players that are, are going to have some question marks. And that's just the way this goes, the business of it all, you know? I like the little hot sauce on my po I like a little hot sauce on my popcorn. I use uh, chopsticks when I consume. <laughs> I'm weird. That is super weird. I'm down for the hot sauce, though, man. Uh, I was in the military with this guy. Um, oh, what was his name? Shit. Man. Oh, Airman Skinner. Yeah, there, that's who it was, Skinner. Uh, but every day at lunch, bro, he'd be getting like cup of noodles, bag of popcorn, dumping that hot sauce on there. I feel like we all did it, though, at the GP shop general, uh, the, the motor pool. Uh, we would go in there, and everybody would be putting some hot sauce on there, putting some hot sauce in the cup of noodles, you know. We had a little snack shack. 
uh, where we get some lunch stuff uh, so you didn't have to go off base to get any food or go to the chow or anything. Uh, pretty good times. Uh, am I right? Blast O Butter. Yes, Ron. Blast O Butter, baby. That is the ticket, man. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, it is the best. And it's even better in the mini bags because that shit stays hot. I mean, super hot. And uh, that's where you want it, man. One of my favorite things about this show is that you read almost every single comment, even if there are 100 people appreciate you. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate that. That is the most uh, important thing here on this show, man, is uh, making sure you are involved. Everybody that's a viewer is involved. Uh, you go to some of these other shows, and I'm not knocking them. Maybe they get too many to read, and that's okay. But um, you don't get any attention, and I, I really like to read comments. Even if I get behind, I try to read almost every one. Uh, some nights we've had up to 150 people at one time concurrently, so that becomes hard. But we we give it our best, and when I have Sean on too, like he can do some, I can do some. So it definitely uh, is something cool that we like to do, and I'm glad that you guys like that also. And don't forget to become a Mike Drop Mafia member, man. There's only a few more days, guys to get your chance to win the James Harrison framed photo of Super Bowl 43 against the Arizona Cardinals in his famed pick six. Uh, so don't forget, that is about to be a goner, and then we're going to move on to the next one, and I think you'll like the next one. I think it's going to be cool, but I already have an idea in place. So, um, yeah, I think you'll like it. I think it'll be worth your while. Uh, but as we continue through the show, hit that like button. Beat it up, dude. Beat the like button up. It's free. It's easy. It's simple. Hit that like button, and it helps out your creator so, so much, guys. And again, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns about the Steelers, the NFL, other teams, anything, go ahead and throw it in there as we will get to all the questions and comments and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about one receiver that the Pittsburgh Steelers are rumored to be bringing in on a pre-draft visit, which I'm sure that it's going to happen, and that is... Um, Oh, what's, how do I say his name? I always, I try not to mispronounce it. Adonai Mitchell. Adonai Mitchell from Texas, Missouri City, Texas, Jr. A six foot, two inch, 205 pounds, a nine inch hand, 32 and three eighths inch arms. Uh, he is a production score of 72 on the next gen stats. Athleticism score of 91. Total score of 81 in the 2024 combine. Wide receiver rankings at seventh. Uh, in the 40-yard dash, he ran a 4-3-40. Uh, the 10-yard split, a 1-5-2. A vertical jump of almost 40 inches, 39 and a half inches. A broad jump of 11-4. He didn't run the three-cone. He didn't run the 20-yard shuttle, and he didn't do the bench press. Uh, but a guy that played uh, in 2021 in Georgia, played all 15 games with 12 starts for the national champions, Um so he produced there, 29, uh, 426, 14.7 yards, uh, average four TDs. Um, yeah, guy that's played some football, man. Uh, I think he would be a quality comparison. And what most NFL analysts are comparing him to, who they are comparing him to, is one George Pickens. Um, so... This guy has some speed, has some size, a little bit of size. Uh, some say that he has bad ball skills, so they don't know if he'll become a very good wide receiver. But I think that he's all around, in general, something that could work. Uh, and I think he would be around when you're trying to get, get somebody. So um, if you like him, if he fits, if he is a stealer, bring him on. I'm down for it. I wouldn't be mad about it. But hey. He's still a guy that's uh, building here. We'll see how that goes. But he also, too, they're putting some remarks here that he can beat the press, has some speed to take the battle to the third level. He's still learning the art of bullying and catching in space and tight quarters um, and jump balls. So that's all something that he could work on, too. So we'll see how that all goes. They say he's a natural hands type catcher, which I like. I like guys that are handsy catchers. I'm not big on body type catchers, man. Um I'm okay with it if you do it when you have to, but I need to see the hands, and I preach that to my kids in youth sports, hands, 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 and that's every every sport I play, basketball, quit trying to catch it, <laughs> you know, like that, catch it with your damn hands, 
always have those hands out in front of you. That's what I want to see. I want to see a very handsy type guy. I don't want to see those body catch guys that predominantly do that, that try to get up underneath there and make a, a sliding like baseball type catch. I want to see handsy guys. I want to see guys that can adjust, manipulate the body, adjust to the football. Those are the types of guys I'm looking for. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm glad the Brandon and I are Grimmers. I think they're gone, Sean, hopefully. I agree. I'm glad, too. Uh, Robert Road. My high school produced two Steelers players, Mike Wagner and Jeff uh, Zagane. I never heard. I've heard of Mike Wagner, not Jeff, though. I didn't hear. What, what high school is that, Robert? Uh, that'd be pretty cool. I don't. I never heard of Jeff, but I heard of Mike, uh, Dylan Becker. Uh, Adani is one of my favorite prospects in the wide receiver class. I just don't think the Steelers will take a wide receiver in the first round if they have. Uh, if they've been consistently finding productive wideouts in the later rounds, chances are probably not. I would say that unless it is one of the top, you know, three prospects, four prospects. Uh, I highly doubt the Pittsburgh Steelers take a guy in the first round at the wide receiver position. Uh, you're right. They have found guys and had success later in the draft. You know, taking flyers on guys that may have had an injury, that are battling back, that made their draft stock may have pulled back a little bit. Uh, finding guys that just, you know, aren't the prototypical uh, wide receiver size that uh, have the ability to be really good, i.e. Antonio Brown, uh, Deontay Johnson, guys like that. They have been known to find those guys. And the Pittsburgh Steelers don't shy away from guys that aren't prototypical uh, set to the standard of the analytics guys. They, they look outside of the box, and we have to applaud the Pittsburgh Steelers for being able to find those guys over the years. And that has been a one big-time quality that they've possessed in, in the draft. Dragons' abilities look out. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be real cool. Especially if you're Russell Wilson or Justin Fields and you have a wide receiver core that's made up of two guys that can play like we saw George Pickens play like since he's been a Steeler uh, when he's gotten the football. Uh, you know, shoot, I'd be chomping at the bit to get, get in with those guys and really get to work because, man, they could set your career off <laughs> in a major way. Well, Russell continue his but set Justin off into that next stratosphere if he's that guy you know uh, I would be chomping at the bit to get a hold of a wide receiver room that had two guys like George Pickens with that type of ability uh Pittsburgh Grills oh, we're just talking about anybody really in general man we're just gabbing about the Steelers as usual man so just jump on in I like Parasol yeah I do too man I do too uh, Nathaniel Sampson, uh, it works. Uh, worry me about uh, not doing all the combine exercises. Yeah, but honestly, I think some of these guys may be catching on to maybe what some of us are catching on to. That the combine, I think, is a lot of bullshit, you know? I think it's a lot of senseless things that don't need to be done. Um, there are some things that I think have some good value, but... There's a lot of senseless things that, you know, it's like why risk injury doing a drill that means nothing, you know? And I think some players think of that. I think they come and they do the things that, you know, the measurables that they think that teams need to see, that teams are going to gauge them and judge them off, tr off of truly, and then go from there. And, you know, if some of those drills don't fit, Screw it. Why risk injury whenever you're a guy that's, uh, you know, aspiring to be in the NFL and you can't risk getting hurt? You know, you can't just, you can't go out there and uh, lay an egg, man, and get an injury. And uh, that'll kill your draft stock and that kills your pocketbook, you know, uh, especially how this draft stuff is now structured uh, in terms of pay and where you have to be to make certain amounts of money. And these guys got to consistently try to get to those upper echelons uh, or those top picks you know that's where the money is the lower you come down the lower money you make and they are looking to get paid man <clears throat> robert road uh carmel high school in illinois jeff was a starting defensive lineman for the steelers in super bowl 30 uh he also uh he also played in two super bowls with the rams and other or in another with atlanta that's really cool man yeah i didn't know him man that's really really neat I was young when Super Bowl 30 hit, uh, but I remember it. But uh, I don't remember, like, every player's name or anything like that. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. I'm going to have to look him up. 
Carmel High School in Illinois. That's pretty cool. I'm going to write it down. I always write notes down from you guys. You guys always tell me some shit, and then I'll uh, I'll write uh, little notes down, and I'll, like, go back after the show, and I'll, like, look at stuff or get to it the next day. So I have, like, literally, dude, tablets, tablets just full of, like, notes from you guys, things that I've wrote down, tons of stuff. Uh, and that's just all from doing his live show a lot of the times because I got to say on my daily uploads, when I upload in the morning, those videos, like I don't do any notes. I don't do anything like that. I, the computer isn't even on usually. Uh, sometimes I do uh, for stats or things like that, but usually I just wing it and go off the hip. So I don't usually do that, but you guys have filled up many tablets with things that you've said over the uh, time that we've been doing this show. What is your least favorite combine exercise? And that's from Ron. Hmm. What's my least favorite? Oh, my least favorite. I wouldn't say anything in particular. I don't have a least favorite. I would say things that aren't measurable in my eyes of playing catch with guys in shorts. Um, quarterbacks that can throw... Uh, a country mile without shoulder pads and a helmet on uh things that like that that bother me get them in some gear man uh get them in some sort of a uh, real football environment um bring some pressure from the edges you know you can you don't have to have hits with that you could have a quarterback in a helmet shoulder pads the full garb man getting under center or having an actual center and full equipment snapping back to these quarterback prospects Allowing them three seconds to drop back, have a little bit of time to start to get their head up and survey, and then have guys bring some simulated pressure. You don't have to have them hit them, but that, those are the types of things I think they should be doing. Football in shorts doesn't excite me and doesn't give me any type of um, knowledge on what you're going to do on Sundays. I need to see game tape. I need to see what you do inside of a football helmet. Just shorts and a t-shirt on doesn't do it for me. There are guys also, I know 40 times are, are cool, and I think they do have some sort of uh, measurable. I think, you know, you want to see how quick guys are. But there are guys that aren't very fast just hanging out on the practice field, not doing anything. But there's something called football speed. And when there's some big dudes that can hit you really, really hard and that can hurt your ass if they get a hold of you, all of a sudden you run a little bit faster. It's called football speed. Game speed is what you have. And there are a lot of guys that have game speed. That when you turn on the tape, it's a different dude. It's a different person, man, than what you're seeing a lot of the times uh, in football and shorts. You know, it's a little bit different. And when nobody, when you don't have those guys running you down, maybe you don't have that extra gear. You know, those are the types of things I'm thinking of whenever I'm thinking about why I think the combine sucks. You know, I just don't think it's got what I need <laughs> when I'm looking at players. Uh, Sam Mason, Van Jefferson should be pumped. He's a stealer, had over 800 yards in 2021. Uh, yeah, it's a good opportunity for him considering the lack of real solid veteran depth in that Steelers wide receiver room. Uh, that is true. Uh, Van Jefferson probably will make this roster in 2024, depending on what they do in the draft. Um, the guys that I think may could be end up being odd men out would be a guy maybe like a Quez Watkins, somebody like that. Um, but yeah, Van Jefferson has had some success in the past. Um, flopped around a little bit there in the last couple years. So uh, I believe he was injured also at one point. So we'll see. We'll see what a new breath of fresh air, a whole off season to prepare, getting to go out and work with Russ, getting to work with Justin here in the off season. We'll see where that brings Van. But we know that the potential is there for him to have a quality season. And I think that that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers saw in Van Jefferson, a guy that has done it before, a guy that has had some minimal success, but success nonetheless, and uh, a guy that can do it and get it done. And I think that that mattered. And uh, I think it could be a good pickup. We'll see how it goes and all plays out.
Uh, Colin Smith, which receiver do you want the Steelers to draft? I think there's so many good ones, man. And I, I, I wouldn't say that I want them to draft one guy in particular. But what I want them to do, uh, Colin, is this. I want them to get a guy that has uh, skill sets that may vary a little bit from what you have. You have a super speedster in Calvin Austin. You have a guy with awesome catch radius, good jump ball ability, all those things. But maybe get a guy uh, that has some uh, mix a little bit. Can go down in the slot. Not afraid to come across the middle. A guy that has some toughness. That can play in the run game. You know, those are the guys that I want to see maybe uh, get drafted. Guys like that. That have the ability to block. That have the ability to be uh, tough across the middle. Not be hesitant on making catches in traffic. Uh, combat type guys that can go and fight for the football. I want guys that can crack back a little bit. And, you know, set Set that run game up. Uh, those types of guys. I want to see a guy that's a little bit feisty. You got a rid of a guy in uh, Deontay Johnson that was one of the better separators in the NFL. So maybe even get a guy that's looking like that. A guy that can have some separation. You know, that's talented at that. Get some varying skill sets. And I think that that's what you need to do when you're building your wide receiver room. You don't want everybody to be in the same skill set range. You want everybody to be a little bit different. So you can mix things up and do a little bit of different things. And uh, I think that that also helps confuse defenses. When they have to have mixtures of personnel out there. And you got to guess uh, at you know who guards who best. Who can handle which skill set best. So those are just my things that I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Uh, would you run to get Marvin Harrison if he's still, if he's at 20? Yeah, I'd take him. I'd take him in a New York second. Uh, definitely. I wouldn't lie. I couldn't pass him up. I think it would be something that could uh, end up being really, really special. And I think you could figure out the rest. Uh, you know, uh, I think it'd be really cool. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting that like button here on Steel City Live as you're here with us on Mike Drop Sports, uh, on our daily live stream as we talk to you about the Steelers, about the NFL, uh, and anything else that you bring up in the chat as we continue to just bullshit and gab through uh, the daily show. Uh, so let's keep going back to the comments here. Jason, I won't be able to make a lot of uh, the show tomorrow. I have a baseball game. I am catcher, so you have uh, some advice for me. Uh, Nathaniel, that's the position I played in uh, baseball was catcher. And not a lot of people like to play catcher. At least they didn't whenever I was a kid. Uh, nobody really wanted to play. Everybody hated putting a dirty-ass cup down there. So, you know, that fell out of the equipment bag. Uh, and nobody liked getting beat up and being hot and sweaty, man. So I always felt like the catchers were the, the great iron guys, man. The guys that were uh, just dealing with it. Doing it because the coach said, hey, man, you catch the ball well, get back there. <laughs> You're stuck, man. And uh, that's what kind of happened to me, man. I ended up just getting put back there. And I stayed back there. And I stayed back there for a long time. But I got to say, I loved being a catcher. But the one thing as a catcher that I think that you got to be, man, is not lazy. You can't get lazy in your stance. You can't get down there and just too relaxed. You got to be on your toes, man. You got to be able to jump up and fire that baseball down to third, down to second. You know, maybe pick off a guy first, but you got to be, uh, you can't be lazy and uh, work hard. That's uh, what I tell you to do. And don't be lazy. Stay on your toes. Stay fresh. Stay quick, man. That's what you got to be. And uh, hold on to that damn baseball when somebody comes and tries to barrel your ass over at home plate. <laughs> Uh, Sean says they should have football IQ testing at the combine. For example, I want to see quarterbacks read a defense and what kind of uh, audible they would call before the ball was snapped. I, I agree, dude. Uh, yeah, they have like that wonder like test or whatever that you take. Um, dude, I don't care what you add and subtract and how much geometry and shit, you know. I want to know football stuff. Exactly what you're saying, Sean. And that's why I think the combine is skewed. I want football stuff. I don't care about everything else, man. There's too much other mumbo-jumbo bullshit in there. And like Sean said, I want to see what you do when you come up to the line of scrimmage. And there is a change in the defense and how you are able to audible out of that. And I hope that, I think they do do it in, in the meetings when they meet with quarterbacks. I do think that they run through those things and uh, test your ability on the playbooks and things of that nature, scheme-wise. I, I do think they do that. 
Uh, but I think it should be emphasized more in the draft or in the uh, drafting process and the combine and things of that nature. Uh, let us know what kind of a processor you are, as uh, Merrill pointed out on the show. A processor of the game, man. How are you processing each individual play, man? That's what we want to know. <clears throat> Uh, Robert wrote, I meant to say defensive lineman for Jeff. He played mainly uh, at nose tackle. He played hockey as well in high school. And uh, to, at 290 pounds on skates. Whoo, shit. Imagine a 290 pound man getting a full head of steam on skates and hitting your ass into the boards. Can you imagine that? Dude, holy shit. Man, would that hurt. That would hurt badly those guys are zooming on those skates man i don't know if you've ever been to a hockey game live uh professional or uh, college those guys are flying bro flying man and somebody to hit you at that that height that speed that weight oh my lord oh wow when steed was uh hurt and suspended okay i'm gonna check him out man you got me intrigued now robert that's so crazy, guys, that somebody that size would play. Wonderlick test is a joke. I heard they have questions like November is what month of the year. Are you serious? Wow, Sean giving you some advice, too, there. <laughs> My advice is don't forget your cup. Amen, dude. I tried to be a little weasel at times, man, whenever I played ball when I was younger catching. And I'd be like, I'm gonna, I ain't wearing that dirty, nasty ass thing until I got my own. Then I was better off. But I was like, I ain't wearing that shit. It just come out of a dirty ass bag, man. Like I ain't wearing that shit. And uh, I tried it a couple times, and I paid the price every single time, man. No, never failed. The pitcher would just eat you in the dirt, man, and it would just be brutal, brutal. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting that like button here for us on Steel City Live. Uh, let's keep on going. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are rapidly approaching 3,000, and we got to hit our 5,000 goal here before the summer. So let's get there as we continue to grow, continue to uh, take off, uh, as some like to say. And make sure you go over and subscribe to Sean's channel, too, as we're trying to still get him up there. And uh, also, uh, we had a cool show over the weekend, Steeler Wade. We want to thank him for coming. Um, we'll have Sean on Wednesday. So, you know, we're continually just uh, pumping out content and uh, trying to have a good conversation with you guys. Oh, excuse me. Man, I drink this liquid IV, guys. And I got to tell you, it's just like, oh, my Lord. It makes you, like, want to belch, man. It's crazy. Sometimes you can't even hold it back. So, excuse me. Uh, let's keep going. I think some speculation uh, might happen if the Steelers get Marvin Harrison. What do you think maybe Pickens might feel like uh, he is getting traded? I don't think so, Ron. I think Pickens is very comfortable in his position right now. Um, I, don't, I don't know. That would be something that you'd really just have to see how it turns out, you know? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but that's what we were talking about earlier, Ron. When I talked about Pickens, is the only one that can really derail this train. He has the ability, man. And uh, unless he gets in his own head and gets in his own way, I, I just don't see how this turns out bad for him. And uh, I, I hope to God that he, he's able to maintain the level of professionalism that it takes to be the number one on a team. You saw Antonio Brown fall apart. You saw after the Steelers made him that number one one guy made him the highest paid guy what happened to him he fell apart and that is what ryan clark said ryan clark said it before they ever did it the minute you pay that guy he is gonna go off the damn rails and what happened went off the rails man some people uh, just can't take that level of fame can't take that level of money and responsibility uh and it eats them up and until it happens to them none of us really know how they're gonna be able to handle it so we'll see We'll see. And we don't know that variable either about the locker room, you know? Uh, how would he handle that? Uh, I think he can handle it, but we'll see. I, I just don't know. Nobody, I don't think, really truly knows until we see them in that in that environment. Jason Ting Cup Jacobs. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no doubt, Nathaniel. What do you play? High school or college baseball, Nathaniel? Uh, George Teston, I don't think GP would uh, peter out like KP. KP, yeah, George. 
no fight. No fight. And I don't care what anybody will sit here and say and go, well, KP, you know, he's a hard worker, man. Or, uh, yeah, KP, he's a hard worker. He's this or he's that. He proved to everybody exactly what he truly is. And I was a big KP supporter. If you've watched this channel for a long time, I tried to get behind him. I really was a cheerleader for Kenny Pickett. As Sean, I was a definite cheerleader for Kenny Pickett. I thought that he could do it and get it done. But when you show me your true colors, when there is adversity put in front of you and you run from that adversity, I don't care how it was that you ran from it or what went down. Uh, you run from adversity. You run from a competition. I just don't got much use for you anymore, especially on the football field. I don't got really anything for you. Uh, I don't want you on my team. And the minute you would have opened your mouth and said that you didn't like the move of Russell Wilson coming in, that you didn't want to have Russell Wilson come in, or you may want a change of scenery because maybe the competition isn't what you want. Bullshit, dude. The first little word you uttered about it. If I were in the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'd have done the same exact thing. You are gone. I'm looking to trade you today. I don't care to who. I don't care. I'm, I'm looking to get rid of you. Because you don't have that heart in my eyes. And I talked about all that this morning, man. And I think a lot of people overlook those variables. And if you haven't watched today's show, go watch it. Because I say, dude, fight, faith, belief. Uh, have some character, man. Believe in your teammates. Value the competition. Those are the things that build championship football teams, guys. Not the bullshit of the analytics. Uh, you could go out and have everybody in the world that's a superstar. That doesn't mean you're going to win a championship. It doesn't. You got to have a team, man. And if you're Kenny Pickett and you're running from challenges, you can't be the leader of a football team. You just can't. <laughs> it's just not happening, man. Uh, I don't like it. That's just an intangible thing that uh, gets you out for me. You got that intangible of being scared of competition. Goodbye. Peace, man. I don't want you. I want a guy that's going to work, man. Work every damn day they come in that building. I want a guy that's going to fight for the guy beside him every damn day. I want the guys to look next to him and say, this, guy, this dude, this guy, my teammate, he has my back no matter what, man. And he's willing to do it all for me, man. He's willing to go all out. And be a puncher. Be a heavyweight fighter, man. Go out there and just keep coming at people. Stay together no matter what happens. Just keep coming. Keep coming, man. Don't stop. <laughs> it's just, I get fired up about that. It just really busts my ass, man. Chaps my ass when a guy like Kenny Pickett that, you know, Acts like he's just some big hard worker team guy. You run away from things. And uh, that's exactly what I think he did. And I, I just don't think you can look at it any other way. I don't think GP would peter out like KP. No, I don't either. Uh, Sam Mason, pretty sure Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't falling to 20. Wouldn't the Giants or Titans take him uh, at 6 or 70 fall? I don't think he gets out of the top five, Sam. Uh, if he did, somebody will snag him up. If he ever got out of the top 10, I'd be absolutely floored. Uh, Nathaniel High School, well, good luck, man. I hope you win your game, man. Um, get, in that get in that batter's box and swing away, bro. Swing away. Take your shot, bro. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, there were three other kids that tried out against me. I was the only freshman. Well, congratulations, dude. That's good. That's really cool. Congratulations to you. Uh, big stretch. What's up? Uh, yep, you have to have heart to pull through. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Flack. Uh, yeah, Falco. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, what was that show? The Replacements. <laughs> that movie, yeah. Guys, you do. And... and Everybody can sit here with all your pretty mock drafts. Everybody can sit here and talk about analytics and which guy can do this or that. There's a set of intangibles that if you don't figure out about a guy and you don't know what you're bringing into the building, and if they don't have it, it's just not going to work, man. It's just not. I don't care. I mean, it's just the facts of sports. You got to have guys that want the same thing, man. You got to have guys working toward the same goal. And, and I really, truly believe that. And I think teams 
uh, get bad and get in a rut when they just draft out of analytics and, oh, man, that guy can do it, man. He's the best. You know, they don't look at attitude. They don't look at the intangible things like heart, fight, uh, belief in your teammates. They don't look at those things. And when you do, you get yourself in trouble. Or when you don't, you get yourself in trouble. And that's why I'm uh, I'm a firm believer in why some of these franchises can't ever win no matter who they draft. No matter who they draft, they just never can quite get it together. They may have a good regular season here and there and get a playoff berth here or there, but you never see them reach the top. You never see them stack Lombardi trophies in their trophy case. You just don't. And there's a reason for that. There is a big reason for that. And as that's they don't look for the right character guys, in my opinion. Now, the Steelers, yes, they've whiffed on some guys over the years. 1,000% they've brought some guys in that they've misjudged. Absolutely. And uh, they it's bit them in the ass. But I think that they've been able to be good judges of character, good judges of team guys. Uh, I think that they really look at those types of variables, and I think that that's why that they've had the success that they've had, winning six championships, um, winning championships in the modern era, winning championships in the 70s, it continued long-term success. Yes, it may not be what we want it to be a Super Bowl every year, but they are there. They are fighting for, you know, playoff spots. They've consistently been successful. And that has something to do with what they believe in inside of that building. And nobody can tell me any different. Uh, let's keep going. Steeler Mike, I don't think the Steelers will draft tackle within the first two picks. Probably one uh, in the third picks. They've shown nothing to show. They don't want Dan Moore on the line. Actually, they've shown they what? Oh, they like him a lot. Yeah, they, I still think that there's a good chance that they take a Latham or Mims or something like that. Um, we'll see how the center position plays out. That's going to be the thing. And you're going to have to see what kind of players fall out of, <laughs> into that top 20 frame. Uh, the draft is a roll of the dice. When there are players coming off the board and there are runs on certain position groupings, teams act differently, man. So that's where you get in trouble there. And if you're not a good general manager, you're not a solid thinker, and you're starting to get caught up in that kind of shit that's going on inside of the draft, runs on tackles, oh, man, we got to go quick. We got to get our guy, uh, you know. Value your draft board. That's what you have to look at. Rate your players. Rate your position groupings. Make sure you're playing your draft board, not playing other teams in the division's draft boards or other teams in the NFL's draft boards. Let them all do that bullshit. Play your draft board. Trust your scouting department, your coaching staff. Trust what they've evaluated over the offseason and last year when these guys were playing. Trust the tape that they've watched. Play your board. That's what I say. And whatever pans out from that pans out. Uh, you'll find a way to fill the holes that you need to because you have to. And when you have to do something, you figure it out. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting that like button for us here on Steel City Live only here on Mike Drop Sports. I'm your host, Jason. Make sure you're hitting it, though. Uh, it really, really helps. Uh, it makes me, I, I, I get amazed sometimes at how little likes sometimes things get when it's like, man, just, it's free. It's free, dude. It's absolutely free. Uh, so make sure you hit that like button. Uh, George, shoestring tackle like that? Yes, absolutely. Hit the shit out of it for us. Thank you. Uh, Sam Mason, would the Steelers draft tight end Brock Bowers if he's still there? Um, depending where, you know, that's the thing, Sam. Um, the draft is so finicky. Yeah, it really is. Uh, if a player's there, but yet there's another player there, uh, that you really highly value and, you already have a player in place at that position that maybe the other player is that you really like. Maybe you swing to the one that you have a deficiency at. You just don't know, especially when they're neck and neck in terms of uh, value of best player available at the time. That's where you get in trouble with that too. You got to kind of weigh those weigh those things out. Uh, hey, we got a guy that's pretty serviceable at the tight end spot. Maybe this is how they think it. I'm not just saying that's what they're going to do, but maybe they're thinking like, we have a guy that's serviceable at the tight end spot, but, you know, we lack a tackle. 
uh, and I have them both pretty much evenly ranked in terms of best, best player available, uh, we're going to go with the tackle because there's a hole there. I think that that's where, you know, when you're looking at those types of position groups, whenever it's maybe not exactly what they need, that's going to be the variable that comes into play there. Uh, Sean Russell Wilson in an Arthur Smith offense should be a lot of fun. I hope the Steelers go all the way this year. Me too, Sean. Absolutely. I think Kyle Russell will succeed. All uh, right. Ron Sampson. I don't think so. Uh, they have Muth. Yeah, and they have Mount Washington. And two, don't sleep on Connor Hayward, guys, as an H-back type player. Uh, I think that he can be successful inside an Arthur Smith system also. Uh, I know some may think that I'm kind of crazy with that, but I think that Connor Hayward could be a mismatch, especially from the H-back type role. Uh, I really, really do. Um, we'll see how this all plays out, but if they could utilize him in the correct way, I think he could be a viable option in the passing game. Um, definitely a viable option in the passing game. And uh, if used correctly, maybe even possibility of uh, in the run game a little bit. Uh, Connor Hayward is an athlete, and uh, we may not have seen a lot of him as of late, but I think that uh, he could be used, and I don't think that he's a slouch, man. I definitely think he can play ball, and that's why he's made this roster and uh, been part of this team. Um, Robert Road, I couldn't make enough contact to play on baseball team beyond Little League. I could hit the ball a long way if I made contact, but damn curveballs or just change up speeds. Uh, Demi, and yeah, I'm not a, uh, uh, yeah, no doubt. I agree, man. Uh, the fastball, you chuck a fastball down the blade, yeah, we'll put it into the next uh, next zip code. But uh, throw that curveball, it won't be tough. Throw that changeup or that slider, might be a little bit different story, Ron, uh, Robert. <laughs> no doubt. Brandon Mann, uh, I like your point of view, man, from a Browns fan. Thanks, Brandon, I appreciate that, man. Welcome. I appreciate it. Uh, but as we roll through, guys, uh, thank you. I just want to make sure I do that and thank you often because uh, you guys are the reason that uh, we can do this kind of stuff. And uh, it's really, really cool. So, guys, we've been going for about an hour. We'll go for a little bit more, a couple more minutes. Uh, if anybody else got anything they want to talk about in the chat, make sure you put that in there. Um, also, I'm just making sure no Steelers news has popped up. We are in that kind of weird part of the year. So, uh, I always double check before we start to wrap the show up just to make sure nothing else has popped up. I see a lot of mock drafts being put out there. This is starting to really, really heat up, man. Yes, there's some people still bashing the quarterback room with the fields, the Wilson thing. There's things about the draft that are being said. There's a lot going on, uh, but I'm not feeding into it just yet. Um, here's an interesting article, and I tend to do this on our live shows. I tend to look at some articles and see exactly what's going on people are talking about, and I do bring them up here occasionally. Uh, let me see um, about this one, adding Juju Smith-Schuster. <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, Noah Strackbine put out there something about the Pittsburgh Steelers could con consider a trade for their old wide out guys. Let's be real. I like Noah's work. I, I do. I really do. I think he's, um, usually pretty good. Uh, but I gotta be practical about this one. Steelers don't bring back players. Usually we'll, we'll just say that that typically doesn't happen. And I know that this has not been a typical, um, off season. So I'll give him that. Uh, I just don't think that that would be something that could happen, but Hey, if the rumors out there, like I always say, there's some sort of truth behind it somewhere. Um, I just don't think that that would be something the Pittsburgh Steelers would do. Uh, Nick Z sucks. We are in the toughest division in football. Otherwise I would guarantee a top four seed. We're on a tough one, but I think the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, held their own, especially last year, finishing five and one within the AFC North. Um, I think that they were pretty quality inside of the division and, uh, the Browns giving them their only defeat and a 13 to 10 loss and a hard fought battle to where you had a quarterback in Kenny Pickett that wasn't able to be efficient in any way in that game. Um, yeah, you had the home run from Jalen Warren, which was really nice to see, but the Pittsburgh Steelers weren't able to get that game really going, man. And uh, you saw them take a loss in Cleveland in a close, hard-fought divisional game. Uh, but the Steelers were able to withstand the rest of the division games, and they finished 5-1, and one, and uh, that's a very respectable record, no matter who's the quarterbacks for any teams, regardless, because it's a black-and-blue division. 
division, man. Every time you go up against a divisional foe, it's going to be a tough game. It's, uh, you know, one of those knockout type games. And you see that every time a division game comes up. It's a, it's a, it's a good game. It's a bloody game, man. And I like it a lot. Uh, Ron, did you hear that Arthur Motes said that the Steelers should get Juju Smith-Schuster back? Yeah, I'm seeing a couple of them. Guys, I got to say, it ain't going to happen. Guys are looking for things to talk about. And yeah, sometimes you got to dig deep, man, to find some things to talk about, especially in the offseason. But I got to admit, I just don't ever see that happening. Uh, and the reason I don't see that happening is because I don't see the Steelers ever having a pattern of that, or I can't even remember anybody that they've done that with other than James Harrison coming back. Uh, I really, you know, I, I can't recall too many folks, man. Uh, I really can't, and I just can't see that happening. Uh, especially with how Juju kind of exited. Uh, I just don't think that it would, I just don't think that it is uh, something that they're going to do. Uh, but we'll see. They do have a hole at wide receiver, but why would you go get an older guy? Why would you make a trade? Here's the real thing, guys. Why burn draft capital? Why burn value whenever you don't have to? Whenever you can use that draft capital to get somebody that has young, fresh legs. Why bring somebody back that's had injuries, that's been in the NFL, that's already been in your, been on your team, that it may not necessarily have worked out just the way you wanted it to. I mean, at times it did. He had moments. But you would have kept him if you really, really loved him. Why bring him back? Why not try somebody new? Why not get a young, fresh set of legs? I, I just don't understand what that would make any sense for, bringing God that you've already had back to the team. I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Steelers run that division. Yeah. Brock Bowers is projected to be a superstar. Outstanding blocker in four and a half uh, speed, uh, 4.5 speed in the 40. He will not get past the top 12 or 15 and could go as high as the fifth to the Chargers. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, man. I just don't know. He does, he is going to be a beast. I don't know enough about everybody. So uh, Robert's giving us a good report on Brock. So you're looking at a guy like Robert saying here, a guy that can not probably get out of the top 12 players. So that's cool. Uh, you know, the Steelers probably ain't going to have a shot anyway, you know. And if he would fall to you, you just got to weigh the options of what you need and who's the best player available. That's really how it boils down. And uh guy like Brock Bowers would be a luxury to have, though, I guess. Uh, maybe you could then uh, not sign back a guy like Pat Fryermuth. Maybe that is the answer. Maybe that's what happens, you know? Uh, we haven't run the division recently, Nick Z. Um, five and one's running the division. Uh, that's the best record in the division. That's running the division, Nick. Uh, I have to disagree on that one. Uh, big stretch 357. Are you and Sean going to do uh, some mock drafts? That would be fun. Uh, I did some not long ago. Maybe Sean and I will do one more. Sean, if you're up to it, maybe we'll do that uh, here uh, this week sometime. Uh, maybe we'll figure it out here. Uh, maybe Wednesday we'll do a mock draft. We'll see. Maybe that'll happen, Stretch. Get that done for you, buddy. Uh, since it's closer to the time now, guys, and uh, I'll dive in a little bit more and research things a little bit more and kind of uh, get a little bit bigger or better picture, uh, a revamped picture of what the Steelers may do. Sorry, my voice starts to go as we get over an hour here, so we're about to wrap it up. That'd be cool. Uh, only ones I can remember are James Han Harrison and Antoine Randwell. Me too, George. I can't remember anybody else. If you guys can, uh, I can't remember anybody. I couldn't even remember Antoine. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool from Nathaniel, Nick Z. What is the point of drafting May? He is Fields not supposed to be the future. No, what the point of the May thumbnail was, Nick Z, um, was... Uh, just what a former Pittsburgh Steeler and Merrill Hodge had to say about drafting a guy like a Drake May and that GMs should be on watch because drafting a guy like a Drake May could get your butt fired because he's not going to be very good probably. Uh, it's going to be really hard for him to succeed inside of an NFL helmet for any franchise. So that was kind of the theory behind the live show thumbnail today. Uh, I try to mix it up and make things interesting. So thumbnails are something you got to think of and figure out. And sometimes I try to be a little bit different with them. And uh, yeah, that was the idea behind that today. Slim Foss, I love the Steelers. What's up? Uh, the Eagles love bringing back old players. Yeah, I just don't think it makes any sense. I just don't. 
and especially like George said, not as trades like that. If you're saying about bringing older plays, players back as trades, yeah. He was saying that James Harris and Antoine Randall, well, they didn't come back in trades. Why give away draft capital for somebody you've already seen, man? Somebody you've already had in the building. It just doesn't make any sense. And these guys are looking for news. I, I, I got to say that that is some of it. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm not dogging it at all. But I'm just saying, I just don't think that it would be something that could uh, make any sense for me anyway, or the Steelers. Yes, why burn draft? Why burn value? Yeah, thank you, Ron. I don't. I just don't see it. Uh, we've been going for a while, D. What's up, my friend? A lot, man. I'm about to wrap it up, bro. <laughs> uh, Sean, yeah, yeah, I'm up for one of those. Uh, if you guys want, we'll get one done, Sean. Maybe we'll do it Wednesday, Wednesday or Friday, maybe. Uh, Willie Williams, Chad Brown, and McFadden. McFadden did. I do remember that now you say that, Robert. Uh, Willie Williams. I don't remember. I mean, I'm sure you're right. I'm just trying to think while you're saying it. Chad Brown. Where'd Chad go? I thought he went to Seattle or something. But you guys are proving the point. Very few. If, a, you know, a handful that we can name off the top of our heads. A handful, you know? So, I just don't think it's a stealer move, man. Uh, it's not a typical thing anyway. Uh, hey, Sean, dropped any videos or streams on your channel? No, nope, Sean better get to work. Uh, Blunt, I think he returned. Uh, I don't think he did. I don't think he did, no. Uh-uh. Mel, or uh, not Mel, duh. Uh, Laguerre Blunt, I don't think so. I don't know, D-Guy. We'll have to look that up. Jeff Stipe, Mal, or Sucker Punch. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Ron Sampson, I may, it makes no sense. I completely agree. D, you should see me throwing a throw net. Everybody makes fun of me. Oh, they're talking fishing. Nick Z, in my uh, opinion, everybody um, overcomplicates everything in the NFL. In today's NFL, you need that guy at quarterback. Nothing really else matters. You do need a quarterback. Uh, there, it, it is overcomplicated, I think. There's too many analytics involved in games and things of that nature and picking players. Uh, but definitely, you got to have a franchise guy or you got to have a guy that's serviceable. And I know a lot of people say, well, you know, he's just a game manager. Uh, that's what I want. I want a game manager. Uh, the best are game managers. And I know a lot of people frown on that, but I just don't think it's something that you frown on. Did y'all catch the eclipse? It was total down here in Texas for five minutes. It was like nighttime. No, it just got dusky here, dude. And I'm in Morgantown, so it definitely was not anything great here for the eclipse. Willie Williams made the saving tackle on third and one to get the ball back for the Steelers winning drive against the Colts in the uh, AFC championship game. Willie Williams. You got all the stats, Robert. I love it, bro. I love it. Uh, yeah, I like game managers, man. Yeah, that, that was the problem here too, man, for the eclipse. The 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 rain clouds, the like dreariness was like too much. It really didn't matter. I got I do got some cool pictures though from it. Uh so it did. Everybody's like, oh, we gotta get glasses. No, you don't. I looked at it right through my phone camera. I held my phone camera up and looked at it that way and took snapshots. Why buy glasses? Makes no sense. It didn't burn my retinas out. I see y'all just fine, and I got some pretty damn bright lights on me just now. Uh, but anyway. I don't know who that is. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. We've been going for 72 minutes. My voice is gassed. So um, until tomorrow, uh, our daily upload, and don't forget our live show tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and as always, man, thank you very much. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for your support. And uh, don't forget, become that Mike Drop Mafia member because uh, the giveaway's coming up for our ID. I mail it to you. Piece of Steelers memorabilia. All yours, and you're going to like the next one. The next one's going to be cool. So, uh, all right, guys, until next time, I'm Jason. This is Steel City Live, and join us tomorrow on Mike Drop Sports for our daily upload, and uh, we'll see you then. So, peace, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it.